Hi darlings, welcome back. I've really missed you guys so much. And before I jump back into my channel, I think that I at least owe it to myself and to you guys a little bit of an explanation as to what the heck has been going on. Why have we been on a hiatus for a really long time? So for over the last four years, I've been experiencing something pretty traumatic and nobody has really known about it. Not my friends or family knew the full extremities of what it was. As you guys know, I've always been an open book. I never really hide things that I've experienced in my past, but I wanna be a little bit more careful about this one because it does involve somebody that I deeply love and care about so much. So I've basically been reliving my traumatic childhood for the past four years. And if you haven't seen my old story times recounting my childhood abuse, I'm going to link them down below because there might be some people who are new to this channel. They might find some solace and comfort in that if they're going through something similar. So let's just jump into it. I've been caring for a family member with BPD. If you don't know, that's borderline personality disorder. And if you currently love somebody with BPD, you know that it is one of the most difficult mental illnesses to not only treat, but for the person dealing with it and the caregiver as well. A lot of therapists sadly won't even accept BPD patients, which is very unfortunate. When you have a loved one with this, you could spend days to weeks to months, or in my case years, of trying to help them until you realize that there's really nothing that you can do unless this person is ready to accept help for themselves. And that in itself has been one of the most difficult things for me to accept. With this illness, you could actually try to be the one person that is truly there for them, yet they will never see you that way. They will only ever see you through their distorted lens that was shaped by their childhood trauma. And then eventually, a lot of the times, you become their emotional punching bag. And then if you're like me, you take it. You justify it by saying that this isn't their fault and they didn't choose this. And the the words that are coming out of their mouth, they don't mean, they can't help it. And because you're not able to speak up to them and you're afraid of triggering them, it really takes a toll on you. For me, it was worse than my childhood trauma. And that's saying a lot. Because at least as a child, I didn't feel the responsibility over essentially keeping somebody alive. Because as a child, I was at least able to speak up, to, to defend myself, and to run away. I truly sacrificed my peace to try to deliver somebody else peace. And then I wasn't helping anybody. And it wasn't working for them. And at the end of the day, I had nothing left to give. Not even for myself. So without sharing too many details, I hope that you guys at least now understand a little bit of where I'm coming from. That I truly, truly wanted to be myself for many, many years. But I was stuck in a cycle and in a state of mind that I now know is called caregiver burnout and a freeze response. I truly lost myself over the past four years. I never set boundaries because I told myself that you shouldn't with family. You shouldn't if you love somebody. I wanted to be their constant source of comfort and be like the one person that would truly help them find a solution to all their problems. I once recently read for those who love somebody with BPD, it is not their fault that this happened to them. However, it is their responsibility to seek help. I would call what I went through unintentional emotional abuse, not by the person, but by the illness. This is a good person. At the end of the day but this illness is just so severe and unfair but i've come out of difficult situations in the past and i've rebuilt myself i've come out stronger and i've persevered and reclaimed my life once before and that is what i intend on doing again now what am i going to do is the question in my eyes i feel like i've lost four years of the upward trajectory that was my youtube career that i had before i lost myself you know but that being said thank god for chris and lex for being my strong just safe landing place in the middle of all this chaos. Thank God for my husband, Chris, for supporting us throughout these hard times. However, when it comes down to the family channel aspect, Lex is now in the middle of being a college student and he's graduating with his AA next summer and he will be transferring to a university. And so since our family dynamic has changed, I'm thinking that the whole landscape of YouTube for us is that I will have to now probably bring it back home to just being Christine D'Amour channel versus the D'Amour family at this point in my life. Sometimes I feel really bad that I have no idea what could have happened in those four years had I continued the trajectory that we had going on at the time. But you know, sometimes things happen in life and I wouldn't have felt right not prioritizing somebody that I love. Although it did take a severe toll on my emotional well-being and 
I'll never know what could have happened in the last four years. I know in my heart that it was the right thing to choose family in trying to help somebody over anything that could have been. And everything happens for a reason. But in regards to the channel, I hope that you guys comment down below and share any maybe concepts or ideas that you guys have for the channel. I'll probably still have the family involved, but realistically, we have no young kids. Our child is that of a college student. I don't know, realistically, I feel like I have to just rebuild my own life again. So I hope you guys just stick with me as I try to put myself back together again. If there's specific types of content you'd like to see, please let me know. You guys have always given me so much more support than I've ever even received from my own family, and I truly mean that. You guys have been there through a lot with me, validating my experiences from my childhood story time videos to everything that we went through as a family a few years ago. No comment that you guys leave goes unnoticed, and I seriously love you guys. So I apologize deeply for not keeping you guys in the loop, but I hope now you understand where I was coming from. It was even getting very old for me to even just let you guys know constantly that oh I'm coming back to YouTube and then I never would however when you're experiencing trauma in real time it really affects every aspect of your life from your confidence to your drive to putting you in a complete like free state where you can't physically like move because you've been through so much emotionally thank you for everybody who still remembers us after all this time and is still willing to just keep up with our lives here I am at 36 trying to figure it all out again but I know that there's probably a lot of you guys who are going through something similar. Maybe you're going through a major transition in your life and you're trying to rediscover who you are. So if I'm not going to keep pushing for myself, I'm definitely going to keep pushing for you guys. So make sure that you guys tune in next week for the first video in the new chapter of my life. And just remember, whatever you're going through, you are not alone. I always try to message everybody as much as I possibly can. And I love you guys. Bye.